Let's go, guys. For those of you that live in East Bond, we're probably quite a familiar sight along the seafront. For those of you that are down here on holiday, there are, there, there are, there are 3,500 coast guards, like these guys here, all around the coast of the UK. And there's 352 coast guard teams. We have mud rescue, cliff rescue, search and rescue. We are a cliff rescue team here. There's Mark, he's wearing the tabard, he's the officer in charge, so he will be ensuring that the guys know what they're doing, and if we have other emergency services on scene, they will liaise with Mark and he will liaise with their officers in charge. The Coast Guard Agency is part of the Department for Transport, so it's paid for by you guys out of your taxes. And it's been established 200 years. The Coast Guard was first established in 1822, and it was to prevent smuggling around the coast of the United Kingdom. Now that we don't have any more smuggling, only people smuggling, but we don't have any more smuggling, we are predominantly a search rescue organisation, and the Coast Guard's motto is to search, to rescue, to save. Here we have our two edge safety officers. So we've got Jack and Nabella. They are going to be the ones that can look over the cliff because remember these guys here, they cannot see over the cliff. So they are going to stake themselves in and they are going to be the eyes and the ears for the guys up here on the top of the cliff. Sadie over here, she's one of our techs. She's going to be our cliff man or our cliff person this afternoon. So she's putting her harness on, ready to go, ready to be deployed over the cliff. When she's done it, Mark will check her over. We always check and double check because the cliffs at Beachy Head are 600 feet high. So we need to ensure that our guys are well looked after and they're safe. So Mark's just checking now. You can see here the guys are banging stakes into the ground. They make it look quite easy, but actually it is quite hard. We're doing it in slow motion this afternoon so that you can all see actually what they're doing. If we were to do it, at the same speed as we would do it on an emergency rescue, it would be a bit too quick and you wouldn't be able to see what we were doing. Over here the frame is being built. This frame here it's the only one of its kind in use in the United Kingdom in the Coast Guard service, purely because we have the highest cliffs, so we need to have a sturdy frame. This frame was developed in Australia in the early 1980s, imported over, and it cost in the region of $5,000 then. And this is the same frame that we've had since it arrived just had new bits and pieces and it gets checked every year for safety. Mark is now just going round, just checking everything, just to make sure that everybody's okay, everything's where it should be. At this point in time, we haven't seen our casualty over the cliff. We know he's down here because he's been located but we can't see him. We don't know how injured he is. You saw earlier on the Coast Guard helicopter come, 
Cross. So that's Rescue 163. That's the helicopter that we work with. It's based down at Lid. There's two of them. They're Augusta Westland helicopters with a crew of three, a pilot, winchman and a paramedic. And we, there's ten of them around the country. And we have two of them at each of the bases. And they are there so that we have a spare one. Sade is now putting all her equipment on. This is the winch that Mark, Martin are carrying out. This is what we will use to winch back up from the cliff. What we do in the Coast Guard, it's not, it's not always cliff rescue. We do various other events. You might remember a few years ago we had Operation Stack down at the M20. We, we were taking part in Operation Stack. We, we had a lot of cigarettes and whiskey washed up at Cooden Beach. So we went down there and got that and hid it. No, we didn't really. We went down there and got that. We have to hand that over to the official receiver. The Coast Guard is not a law enforcement agency. That's down to the Border Force. And we're not a defence. We're not a defence team. That's, that's down to the Royal Navy. We are purely there as an emergency first response. The Coast Guard is the fourth emergency service. We are a category one responder like the police, the fire service and the ambulance service. The Coast Guard is a national service, hence HM Coast Guard. Um, the Vice Commodore is the King. Previously, up until she uh, passed and it was the late Queen. And we don't have any borders. We can get sent anywhere. Hence, we were working on Operation Stack up in Kent, whereas the fire service, the police and the ambulance service, they have specific areas where they designated to work. Now, you can see here, the frame has been put together. This frame is a counterbalance frame, and you will see when Sadie goes into the frame, it will counterbalance, and she will be suspended over the cliff. The reason they've left it here is because this area here is what the Coast Guard called the safety zone. So anybody that's not roped in should it go within about six or seven metres of the cliff edge. What will happen, the Vela, the Vela and Jack, they will take the frame forward, they will put it on the cliff edge and they will stake it in. Anything, they will check with the officer in charge because he needs to coordinate everything so that everything happens in a particular order. We can't have people just doing what, like any of the emergency services, the guys here, they can take any of these positions and dependent on their availability, they could take any of these positions. We're trained to do all of these positions. The frame will be going forward very shortly once the guys come to collect it. And like I said earlier, if you were here when we when we had our water rescue display down on the beach, and like all the emergency services, as a category one responder, we have a duty of care for everybody that we work with. And, and there's a, the, the category order is one yourself, secondly is the rest of your team, thirdly it's the other emergency service personnel that you happen to be working with, fourth it's members of the public, we need to keep them safe, and last of all the casualties at the bottom of the hierarchy, simply because they're already injured, we do not want to add to anybody else getting injured. Now today it's a really nice day and these jumpsuits are really, really hot. Other times it's chucking it down with rain and then we're really, really cold and wet. In November up the beachy head or on the beach down at the Sovereign Harbour. 
We work like we work quite closely with the lifeboat, the, the, the boys and girls on the RNLI, also the ambulance service, and we work very often with our helicopter that you saw today. We don't work very often with the fire service, but we have done. If we've had if we've had issues up at Beachhead or on the beach, we will work with all the partner agencies. As you can see, the frame will be ready to go forward. What they're doing, obviously, they're kneeling down because that's so you can see and they're not blocking. Normally, if we was on a job, they wouldn't be kneeling there, they would be going around doing other things, but we don't want to clutter the ring up, we don't want to clutter the ring, we want you guys to see each of the different elements. So when they've done their bit, they can go down on one knee so that you can see what they're doing. The frame's now being fed out. And it will be called, this is called a tugger or a luff. This, this rope hits one to the power of five. And what it will do, it will counterbalance the weight of the Coast Guard and any emergency personnel we might need to deploy, perhaps a paramedic, a doctor, other Coast Guard officers and the casualty. You will see how it works once they've staked it in. So what Mark's doing now, he's ensuring that the frame, because we work at quite a big distance as you can see, we, we use hand signals quite a lot. To bring the winch up, they will go like this. To stop, they will go like that, or they will go like that. If we have 10 feet to go, they might go, with their, with their tip here. That lets everybody up here know because we have we can't hear. Once the winch is going, we can't hear what's going on. So they're all looking at each other, watching out for each other. Now staking the frame into the ground. Okay. They're ready now. Again, they wouldn't be down on their knees. They're doing this for your benefit, so that you can see and Mark can see that everybody's in position. Sadie's now got herself ready. She's one of our female technicians, you have to be technician level to be able to be deployed over the cliff. You have to have certain skills because you're down the cliff on your own and you have to know that you have to trust everybody up here that's going to look after When that cliff man become, is over the cliff, the order of priority changes. Your order of priority is not yourself anymore, it's that person over that cliff, your teammate, that you can't see. What we can do, obviously, we're not going to do it today because it's a simulator one, but we could take a, a stretcher over, we could have the helicopter on call, we could have any amount of resources that, we, that is required. Everybody here, we train quite a lot, obviously, we have to be able to train because if one of you was in, got into difficulty and you needed our help, you want to be confident that you know when we arrive we're going to rescue you and that we know what we're doing.
So we train a lot, we spend a lot of time with each other, testing our equipment, looking at our equipment, getting a good feel of our equipment so that we're all familiar knowing what every piece does, what every, where every piece of equipment goes and the purpose of it. You will notice we have two ropes in the Coast Guard everything is done in twos. The reason is if Sadie's over a cliff and a piece of flint snaps one of the ropes she's not going anywhere she's still going to be over that cliff. We have two breast rope men so that sometimes when the cliff man goes over the cliff and goes out of sight with one the other one can see them. And all the coast guards here they're all under the instruction of Mark this afternoon because he's our officer, he's our incident officer and he will be in contact with Solent which is the, which is the Maritime Rescue Coordinator Centre so when you ring 999 and say I want the Coast Guard you will get put through, you will get put through to Solent we will get tasked and this is what would happen So Mark's now just checking Sadie again. We check, check, check. We, in the Coast Guard, we don't have a second chance of getting it wrong. We have to get it right the first time. So Mark's now just going to go out. He's checking all the equipment, making sure everything's where it should be in order that we can deploy our cliff person safely down the cliff. Sade is now going out again. You see, Mark is not going forward because of our safety zone, because nobody else is roped in. What we would, what we would also do the Coast Guard would sort of be on the phone now to the ambulance service. We try not to call them until we need them. We know how busy they are. So we will call the ambulance service. They will come in and then we, once we get our casualty up, we will then hand it over to the ambulance service. You can see now, Shade is up in the frame and she's being lowered over the cliff. She's being lowered, lowered over the cliff. She's now going down the cliff to the casualty. She will assess the casualty. She will assess the casualty because remember, these guys here cannot see, which is why Novella is giving instructions to these guys so that they know when she's reached the casualty. She's now assessing her. Mark will then go over. He will talk to the ambulance crew to update them on what's going on. He will give them as much information as because the person over the cliff has radioed to us so that we can say they've got a broken arm, a suspected broken leg or whatever their, whatever their condition is so these guys are ready for when they come up. Okay, just to remind you that we don't normally sit down on the job, this is for your benefit so that you can see. If you see us in the beer tent later, don't be embarrassed. Come up and say, hello guys, what are you having? We could get tasked any time of the day or night and it's not always the same people obviously because we're not all available 24 hours a day seven days a week we have roads of people that's available so at least you know if you get into trouble we will come out and we will we will search for you we will find you and we will save you with the sun rollers coming up kids be careful of the sea we, we get a lot of dinghies out at sea
We're now going to, very shortly, we're going to bring the casualty and the Coast Guard back to the top of the cliff. In this instance, for the sake of the demonstration for you today, he's maybe got a few scratches and bruises, so we'll hand him over to these guys here from the ambulance service. We also have quite a lot of dogs going over the cliff up at Beachy Head, so if you have a dog, please keep it on a lead when you're walking it up at the cliffs, because if your dog goes over, there's a very, very small chance that it will survive. If you look at Novella, she's now given instructions to these guys to bring them up the cliff by, because she's waving her left arm in the air. This is so these guys here, who cannot see over the cliff, know exactly what's happening. And you can see the rope over here is being hauled in by hand to coincide with the rope that's taken all the weight. There's no weight on that red rope. All the, all the weight is on the other rope. They've now been told the frame's now going to come in. And then what will happen, the Coast Guard and the casualty will be lowered and they will be handed, well the, the casualty will be handed over to the ambulance service. Can we have a hand for Ben from the lifeboat? He was our casualty this afternoon actually. Thank you, Ben. What the Coast Guard, what the, what the cliff person will do now is to bring them forward to here and then we will hand them over to the paramedics and they will do whatever is necessary. That's where our part of the operation finishes. And this afternoon Ben's got a, what we call a rescue strop on, which Sade is now taking off of him. We've had 69 calls this year since the 1st of January for the East Bourne and Berlin Coast Guard teams. And then there we are, hand it over to the ambulance service. They will do whatever they need to do and that's our part of the rescue finish. So what we need to do now, we need to do exactly what, we, what, exactly what we've done, but we need to dismantle all our equipment and you'll see how we do that as well. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Eastbourne and Berlin Gap Cliff Rescue Team. <laughs> Lovely job, guys. Thank you. They all want to go and watch the football. Can you hurry up? they'll be given the instructions from the OIT and then you will see that we can then start to take all the equipment down. And then they take our casualty off to where they're off to the hospital. I hope you enjoyed that ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you very much. This is as I said the Eastbourne and Burley Gap Coast Guard rescue team here to look after.